Its vision aims for a corruption-free Trinidad and Tobago, but the Integrity Commission says the current legislative framework handicaps this goal. To achieve more success in uncovering corruption and monitoring public officials, the Ken Gordon-led commission proposes a number of drastic recommendations that will arm them with powers to crack down on white-collar crime in a serious way. We want increased powers of search and seizure as well as arrest. They are very high-profile people uh, on the European continent, I wouldn't call names, whose offices have been raided and documents taken away in search of possible evidence against corruption. All right? We want those same powers. The Commission proposes it should have special powers to designate investigators similar to a police officer, authorize investigations, summon witnesses and subpoena persons in breach of the Integrity and in Public Life Act. In making a case for the recommendations, the Commission expressed concern that there appears to be no penalty for the breach of the Code of Conduct by persons in public life. You know, people might think, well, all right, I will get charged for breaching the Code of Conduct, but nothing ain't going to happen. Right? We, we, want to, we want to be much more firm. If you breach the code of conduct, you know, remember my earlier slide, if you have standards to adhere to, breach of these standards should involve a penalty. Commission member Neil Rawlingson believes all persons and institutions who use public money should fall under the Act and therefore suggests a widening of the pool to include, among others, chairman and members of all service commissions, the transport commissioner, the commissioner of police, CEOs of all state enterprises and statutory bodies, even special and technical advisors to ministers and also judges and magistrates. Yes, um, we are just going by international practice. Right? Judges are not excluded in, in other jurisdictions, and we don't see why that should be the case here. If these amendments are approved by Parliament, the Integrity Commission will then be in a position to demand audits of entire institutions which are identified as being involved in corrupt practices as opposed to just individuals. I'm Kamal Georges reporting for CNC3 News.